Uh, the mere mention of the word cemetery, many people tremble as it brings to mind frightening scenes from movies or perhaps by virtue of just knowing that a place houses the remains of the dead. Well, there are some amongst us in society who make the business of the dead theirs and in so doing manage to make ends meet out of it. In the following report, my colleague Akosia of Poku finds out what drives people to a cemetery in search of work. These places have become home not only to the dead, but to the living as well. Unusual, I agree. But some of these destitute individuals you would meet at the La, Osu, or Awudome cemeteries ironically earn a living by making the dead comfortable. At the Awudome and Osu cemeteries, some of the casual workers who assist by weeding, sweeping and preparing the graves have interesting stories as to how they got there. But what has kept them all at their various cemeteries for so many years? Families day here. How we have at times used to make bush. We used to come, we used to have, happy to come and weed and prepare the place neatly. That is where we are. We are here. These casual workers earn their monies, usually paltry sums, through the benevolence of clients as they are employed by the cemetery managers and not the parents' institution, which is the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, AMA. However, the sextants at the La and Agudome cemeteries, David Dangma and Prince Otu, hope these men can be officially made permanent staff as they augment the work of the few personnel assigned by the AMA. Some residents of Jamestown in Accra have accused government of unfairly destroying their homes. Many of the affected residents say they have been left homeless following a series of demolition exercises carried out by the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, AMA, to pave way for the construction of the Jamestown Fish and Harbour Complex. There is more in this report, filed by City News' Michael Obudu. The residents, many of whom are fisher folks, could not hide their frustration about the situation. <laughs> And in the midst of it all, is the only school along the stretch with a student population of 120, which also was demolished, forcing the school children to study under a canopy. The member of parliament for the area doesn't seem pleased with the turn of events. The scope of the work, I don't know whether it's been modified because we've not been consulted as the member of parliament. I've not been called to any meeting. I don't know what is being done. Adan Siasukwa MP KT Hammond has asked the Energy Minister to abrogate some oil exploration contracts signed under the previous NDC administration. According to him, the permits for most of the companies have gone beyond a three-year mandatory period without any successful oil find. There is more in this report. Adan Siasukwa MP KT Hammond began debate on the message of the State of the Nation address today. In a submission, he indicated that government must abrogate most oil contracts for exploration signed under the NDC administration. Here is why. To ask the Minister of Energy, Mr. Speaker, to abrogate all of these contracts. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the, uh, the contracts, they are given three years in the first phase, Mr. Speaker, to do the appraisals, to do their assessment data, and all of that. Mr. Speaker, after that, the Speaker, all of these companies have gone past the three years, they've exhausted their extension periods. The Criminal Investigations Department, CID of the Ghana Police Service, has extended a formal invitation to the national chairman of the opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, Samuel Ovuswampofo. His invitation is to assist with investigations into the leaked tape in which he made some revelations about their failed plot that led to the violence recorded to the Ayawaso or during the Ayawaso West Morgan by election. The letter inviting Mr. Ampofu said he should report at the CID headquarters tomorrow at 10 a.m. Now, the National Democratic Congress in a statement said the alleged leaked tape is false and concocted. We stay with this story because the governing new patriotic party MPP is demanding the resignation of the national chairman of the opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, Samuel Fosuampofo, in the wake of the alleged leak tape. There is more in this report. In a leaked audio, a voice believed to be that of the NDC chairman, Samuel Ofusuampofu, in a meeting with party officials, among other things, suggested targeted attacks on the EC boss and persons within the MPP ahead of the 2020 elections. 
It also details how the opposition party allegedly planned to create chaos during the Yawasu West Wagon by election with its vigilante group, but were eventually overpowered by state security. Addressing the issues raised in the tape at the MPP's headquarters today, the MPP's Director of Communications, Yao Bwabena Samwa, accused the NDC of inciting the violence. On the tapes, the national chairman of the NDC is had planning to integrate Tagri into the NDC party fabric. Mr. Samoa also took a few swipes at the newly elected presidential candidate of the National Democratic Congress, John Dramani Mahama. Kidi Mahama intends to lead a violent extremist organization in his quest to become leader of this nation. The presidential staffer and secretary to the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, Charles Pissu, has been accused as one of the persons undermining government's fight against the very menace he's supposed to be fighting. In a release documentary by investigative journalist Anas Arumi Yawanas, dubbed Galamse Fraud, Mr. Bissu is seen allegedly facilitating a company seeking to bypass laid-down processes for mining operations. There's more in this report. The Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining was commissioned in March 2017 by President Ekufuado to sanitize artisanal and small-scale mining in the country, as well as develop a roadmap towards lifting an indefinite ban on small-scale mining that lasted about 21 months. But in a shocking and rather ironic posture, its secretary and a presidential staffer, Charles Bissu, is captured in a secretly recorded video accepting bundles of cash to facilitate clearance for a mining company without going through due process. He is heard in the video instructing his subordinates to fast track the processing of the company's documents. We told Bissu our excavators were already on site working and we needed him to work on the documents while we were still mining. He took our documents and called for it to be fast tracked for us. There are security operatives, informants, and go betweens who also offer to provide the company with information on the movements of a security tax force against illegal miners and others who offer to provide armed guard for the company's concession. All these are actions that are in sharp contrast with the objectives of the very institutions they work with or purport to work for. 